Hey, this is the Fight Nerd, and welcome to the World Series of Fighting 10 recap in 10 minutes or less. If you don't get your fights recapped in 10 minutes or less, your pizza is free. World Series of Fighting 10 emanated from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada on June 21st, 2014, featuring three title fights and two other featured fights on the main card, which was aired on NBC Sports. We're going to be only discussing the main card, not the prelims. And before we get into the fights, I do want to comment about the uh, opening show opening video package uh it kind of reminded me a lot of the very old school ufc pay-per-views and whether that's good or bad i'm not quite sure yet the evening of action kicked off with the featherweights as four-time all-american wrestler lance palmer met undefeated nick labosco spoiler alert labosco does not stay undefeated by the end of this fight after a slow feeling out process palmer took down labosco took his back and kept that position tight combined with some ground and pound and a tight rear naked choke to get a tap-out victory late in the first round. One word can describe Palmer here, and that's dominant. He reminded me of a smaller, younger Mark Coleman in the way he controlled his opponent and never let up. The major difference here being that Palmer has a gas tank and fights much smarter than Coleman did in his era of supremacy. When you have a team that has Uriah Faber and Chad Mendes, you can do no wrong, and Palmer has clearly rebounded in a big way over his last loss in the company. After this, Tyson Griffin met Luis Firmino in a lightweight bout, that saw Firmino quickly take Griffin's back and nearly end it very early in the first round. The black Zillion trained Firmino did not want to go toe-to-toe with Griffin, who was clearly the better striker and got the better of any of those exchanges on the feet, and did his best to keep Griffin grounded and in constant danger of submission attempts. Buscape spent most of the fight stifling Griffin's boxing by smothering him on the ground, but occasionally tried to strike with Griffin, which usually did not end up in his favor. In the end, Firmino grinded out a unanimous decision win in an exciting brawl between two very experienced fighters. Griffin's biggest problem here was that he was striking like a heavyweight instead of a lightweight, and by that I mean he was throwing far too many looping shots and tossing his entire body into all those strikes and unbalancing himself in the process, rather than keeping his strikes much tighter to keep Buscape out of range. And a good example of this would be those front kicks that he was constantly snapping at Firmino that usually landed or at least kept pushing him back when he did try those. Granted, Griffin did do big damage when he landed those punches, but that was few and far between. Griffin had great submission defense and position escape abilities, but Firmino just poured the pressure on despite being unable to finish, and it was that constant switching of superior positions and danger of being put into a submission that led to his victory here. Following this, the title fights began, starting with the women's strawweight title match between defending champion Jessica Jag Aguilar taking on the Kamikaze Angel, Ami Fujino from Japan. Aguilar is the best female strawweight in the world, bar none, and she showed it here after five rounds of complete domination against Fujino. The Japanese challenger simply could not handle the strength and ability of the champ, as Aguilar constantly came forward, drawing blood late in the first round after bashing her opponent's nose into oblivion. Jag took the fight wherever she wanted, including taking Fujino down in the third round and working for a submission that Fujino sunk in for a long time, and was somehow able to survive and spend the rest of that round being pummeled on the ground, which might have actually been a worse fate for her. The last two rounds of the five-round war saw Aguilar being more patient and playing it safe by clinching against the fence, taking Fujino down when she could, and just doing enough to stay ahead on the scorecards, while Fujino desperately tried to turn up the heat, but unfortunately for her, it was too little too late. Jag retained her title by unanimous decision after going through all five rounds of the bout and continues her nine-fight winning streak. To her credit, Fujino never backed down from Aguilar and kept moving ahead, but she was unable to capitalize on any mistakes from Jag, of which there were very few. Even with the loss, Fujino looked like a strong competitor and someone I would watch more of, so hopefully we see her again in the World Series of Fighting promotion. Does Fujino deserve a rematch because of her plucky performance? Not really, since she mostly just hung on, but I wouldn't mind seeing her fight someone else and see if she can improve enough to earn a second shot at that belt. Who's next for Aguilar? That's to be determined also. Up next, Rick the Gladiator Glenn crushed the reigning featherweight champion, Georgie Karkanian's nine-fight win streak in a mere two rounds. Georgie easily took down Rick at the outset of the fight and outgrappled him, locking in an armbar attempt from the back that should have ended the fight fast. But somehow Glenn survived and punished the champ with ground and pound until the first round ended. When you look at that armbar and you see how long it was in there and how deep it was in there, it really should have stopped the fight. But it looked like it was mostly just a slip uh, due to most likely sweat from two of the fighters that helped Glenn get out of that one. Georgie spent the second round seeking for a double-like takedown that took him nearly half the round to get, 
but ended up being reversed by the challenger, who used his 8-inch reach advantage to deliver some serious ground and pound to the champ. Carcanian held on as much as he could, but something clearly looked wrong with him, and in between the second and third round, the champ was unable to make it out of his corner, complaining about his ribs, and was forced to give up, giving Glenn the featherweight belt in a very weird ending. Was this match an unfortunate fluke that would have ended differently if not for the injury? Possibly, but we're not going to know unless we get a rematch, and as opposed to the Aguilar for Gino match, I would actually be okay with seeing these two go at it once again, since it did end so abruptly. It was definitely a competitive matchup, so let's get these two guys back in the Decagon again once Georgie heals up. And finally, the main event of the night saw Henzo Gracie black belt Dave Branch take on Jesse Taylor for the inaugural World Series of Fighting middleweight title, and Branch made it look so easy. Taylor shot for a takedown right away, but Branch expertly sprawled and ended up in a guillotine attempt from Taylor. Branch was in no danger despite being that hold for a while, and seemed to allow Taylor to just blow his arms out from the attempt while he worked to better his position. And moments after, the pair scrambled, with Taylor walking right into a tight darce choke that forced him to tap out quick in just under two minutes of the first round. This fight would mark Dave Branch's first win by finish since Shark Fights 15 back in May 2011, where he TKO'd Jeremy May towards the end of the third round. The visibly emotional Branch has improved his World Series of Fighting record to 4 0 and has took the first ever middleweight title back to Brooklyn with him. And as a person who's watched him fight in a lot of these smaller leagues before he made it to the big leagues, I'm very happy to see him get that belt as well, so congrats to Dave Branch. Top to bottom, World Series of Fighting 10 had some good fights, and even the more lopsided ones still remain pretty entertaining. My Submission of the Night award obviously goes to Dave Branch for that slick Darce choke, and Fight of the Night would have to be Firmino vs. Griffin for putting on a show. No bad fights at all on the main card, including the featherweight title fight that ended so abruptly, and that's just the nature of the game sometimes. Overall, it was a show worth checking out, so if you can, make sure to catch a replay on NBC Sports. The next time we see the World Series of Fighting, it'll be July 5th on NBC, the actual NBC and not NBC Sports. And they've got a pretty interesting card that seems to be built around mainly pushing Nick Newell and John Fitch. So expect another recap of WSOF coming up then. We will see you guys next time for another MMA recap in 10 minutes or less.